In this video, we'll take a look at how you expose a TCP or a UDP based service with inside OpenShift so that you can use it externally. In this session, we'll take a look at what the root types are, as a reminder, and then we'll look at configuring non-HTTP services. We'll think about some considerations that you need to have, and then we'll expose that service. When we think about routes, we think about HTTP and HTTPS traffic. And in a previous session, we looked at how you can actually route your web services using DNS names. And you can see all about that on our YouTube video. In this session, we want to concentrate more on the TCP and UDP sockets, which are used by services such as databases, message queues, and file transfer, where they don't use the HTTP or HTTPS protocol, but their own TCP or UDP based protocol. In this case, we're looking more at exposing sockets than we are at routing types. Socket applications do not use a proxy like our HTTP and HTTPS web-based applications. Instead, we need to direct our service to a dedicated port that is normally referred to as an endpoint and in the cluster is referred to as the node port. The cluster will reserve this particular node port for your service so that every time that port number is hit on the cluster, it will forward it to your service's port. Let's consider a non-HTTP service. In this case, let's look at a database like MySQL. It's not something you would normally run within Kubernetes, but it gives us the chance to take a look at a TCP-based service. We know that by default, MySQL listens on port 3306. And ideally, if we were setting this up correctly, we would have persistent storage. The MySQL service can then be wrapped around our deployment config so that we can target multiple pods and in the event of a failure we can fail over to a new pod and our service will detect that pod is there. This means that the service itself carries the port 3306 rather than having to work out whether we've got a new pod, whether the pod's IP address has changed or not. So we still intend to wrap within a service. As part of our service build we want to tell the service to use a cluster assigned port number or in our case, we can actually hard code a port number in. Here we've used 33027, but later on we'll see that we'll use a different port number to target that service. But the port number that you specify on the cluster is the port number that your external users will use. So when our users now wish to connect to our service with inside our OpenShift cluster, they would open up something like MySQL Workbench. They would tell it to point to our clusters IP address or our cluster's DNS name, and then they would use port 33027 to actually make the connection through to the MySQL server. To make your user's life easier, we could add a load balancer in front of our cluster, and that way enable a DNS name and the regular port 3306 to hit the load balancer, and then forward on those requests to port 33027 on our OpenShift cluster. Let's now take a look at a demonstration. Let's put this together. First, let's get an idea of our namespaces. We've got quite a few. So what we'll do is we'll create our own namespace on the server. And the namespace or the project will create what we call test1. Test1 is created on our server and we can see here We've got a few files, YAML files, which define our deployment config and our service. Let's take a quick look at the deployment config. Within the deployment config, we can see it's deployment config kind. We can see we're setting it up for a MySQL in our namespace of test one. We're gonna use a rolling deployment and we only need one replica. And we've specified the select for MySQL. The container itself is gonna be called MySQL and the image we want is from our Docker a hub called MySQL and the ports that the container will have is 3306 which is what MySQL runs on by default and we know that the protocol it uses is TCP. We've got a couple of environment variables in particular the MySQL root password so that MySQL will start up. Let's now load this configuration in to our service. At the moment we don't have any 
So we're creating a fresh deployment config. So we'll apply our deployment config into Kubernetes, into OpenShift. We can see here that our deployment config has actually been created. Let's check it. So we can see that we've got our MySQL deployment, revision one, desired account one, current one, and it has been a config. Let's see if there's a pod. And we can actually see we have one of one running pods as desired. Let's just take a look then to see whether MySQL is running by looking at the logs. And we can see here that we actually have port 3306 exposed and available within the pod. Let's just log on to that pod with bash and try running MySQL and see what's actually there. So we'll log in as root with our secret 123 password as defined in the config. The database is currently in there, are the default ones. So let's create a database that we can see later on to prove that we are looking at our real server. We'll just call it Steve. We're not going to put anything in it. We just want it to be there. So we can see we do have Steve now added to our database server. Let's leave here. Now we want to create the service. We don't have a service at the moment. So let's take a look at our service YAML file. And we can see here we've got a kind service. We're going to call it MySQL in the namespace of test1. The ports, we're going to name the port MySQL and point it at the containers 3306, so port and target. And it's TCP based. The node port is the port that's going to be available on the server itself, so 31306. The cluster IP is made up. It fits within a range. If you get it wrong, then you'll get told by OpenShift that you'll need to be within your cluster IP range. And I've just arbitrarily put in an external IP address, but ideally it should be one that's pointed to your server so that you can use the real IP as well. But the external IP address in this case can be arbitrary because we're going to use the cluster's real IP address and not the cluster IP, which is also made up with inside the cluster range. So we'll apply our service configuration. As we can see, MySQL service has been created. Let's get the service information. And we can see that we've got our MySQL service. It's of type load balancer. There's the cluster IP we specified in some external IP address. But the most important thing is we can see the port mapping to the containers 3306 and the clusters 31306 port. Let's now try uh, and connect to the server. So let's get our IP address for our cluster. So that's my master's IP address. So we're going to use the MySQL client on the command line to actually connect to this IP address. So we use the username root again, password secret123, this time minus H with the IP address and the port number minus capital P 31306, which is our cluster. So they should match up. So we're connecting to the external one that's been exposed. And as you can see, we've connected up. Let's just check to see if our Steve database is there. It is indeed. There it is. There's our Steve database. And let's also try and connect using the actual DNS name as well. So we're told our DNS name for our cluster is called API CRC testing. So let's just change that IP address. So we'll do the same, connect to root, secret123, minus H, this time API CRC testing, and then minus capital P with the exposed node port. And as we can see, we have connected to our MySQL using the DNS name. So to sum up, we've exposed a TCP based application externally on our cluster. We've taken an IP address. Now we've used an arbitrary random external IP address. Uh, when you read the documentation, they actually tell you you should target a valid IP address that is available to get to your cluster. But as you can see, we can use the cluster's IP address or DNS name and the node port, which is the most important part. With the node port, that's fixed to our service so that every time we hit that node port value on the cluster using either the cluster's IP address or DNS name, it will forward on to our containers service and the port number 
that we've specified for that service to run on. The main characteristic is the cluster IP must be within the range of the cluster itself. If you do need to look up the external IP address assignment for valid IP addresses, then the documentation link here will allow you to see how that's done.